Shalom, dear friend. Wonderful to be with you. This is Israel First, and we are bringing you news and interviews from the beautiful land of Israel. And today we have a wonderful guest, David Nekrutman. David was born in uh, America, Brooklyn, in New York, and uh, he has a BA in Forensic Psychology and a Master in Social Work. Now, David is very special because he's prominent a prominent figure in the world of Jewish and Christian relations and is the executive director of the Center for Jewish and Christian Understanding and Cooperation. Long <laughs> I, I said it well, wonderful, because it's a very long name. Short is CGCUC. And it was started by uh, Rabbi Shlomo, Shlomo Riskin, Riskin. And, and myself founded the Center for Jewish Christian Understanding and Cooperation to be the first Orthodox Jewish center in the entire world to religiously dialogue with the Christian world. In 2008? In 2008. I've been yeah. doing Jewish Christian relations for 16 years, mm -hmm. but there hasn't been an institutional response to the overwhelming support of Christians around the world for Israel and the Jewish people and especially from the Orthodox Jewish side, that makes up 10% of world Jewry. Mm -hmm. What is our response to this new phenomenon of a Christian coming together and supporting the Jewish people in the state of Israel? The question comes up is, what is our religious obligation mm -hmm. to that? And the center is the institutional response to that. And we, we base it upon that, of course, Christians believe in Jesus' divine and savior. We're not here to make Christians Jews, mm -hmm. just like we also ask respect from from the Christian world to allow Jews to be Jews, even though there is the Great Commission. And obviously that becomes one of the tension points of how do we do this while respecting our theological boundaries. But we have pioneered a path mm -hmm. that we're able to respect each other's th core theological doctrine, yet advance kingdom here on earth. That's it. And that the key is really yes. kingdom at the end of the day. We are both committed and obligated on behalf of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob mm -hmm. to bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth. And that looks like something, but we don't know exactly the language to do it together. Mm -hmm. We both do yes. it separately in our own faith communities. So that's it. By being a pioneer, because you're the first one through the wall, you get bloody the most, mm -hmm. but you also pr pave the way for other people to come in. And I think that's what's been happening within the Orthodox Jewish community, more and more people where, where, feel where? in the Orthodox Jewish community are feeling more and more mm -hmm. comfortable with the relationship. I know when I first started out 16 years ago, I would be the sole representative of the Jewish people at a Christian event for Israel. Mm -hmm. And here we are almost six, we're 16 years later and we're inviting Christians into a synagogue to celebrate Israel's Independence Day through a psalm worship of Psalms 113 to 118 no, known as the Hallel Psalms. Mm -hmm to fulfill that mandate of Psalm 117, that the nations will come together to praise God for what he's done for us. So look what's happened just in 16 years, sole representative for the Jewish community for certain celebratory events on the Christian side. And here's the synagogue inviting Christians coming in, and, and we're doing a Psalm and worship, they're coming. And, they're yeah, coming. and they're coming. This is amazing. It is interesting because we, we now have the name Israel first, not first as like, the first champion, but first as like foreigner. And I really think, like you were saying, you are a foreigner in, in what's happening between Jews and Christian. And, and I think God is, is making sure that we can't do without you and you can do without us. Correct. That is something very special that's happening in Israel, but also all around the world. And we're so happy to do this program for you because we know that people are so hungry. Now, how did you come to this place? Because you were from the Hasidic community. Uh, what we call the yeshiva world, I'm not, uh, I'm not well, which Bar, Bar Park, where I grew up, Bar Park and Floppish in Brooklyn, New York, are the mm -hmm. main uh, places of where Orthodox Jewry mm -hmm. flourishes in, in, in New York, especially during my time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I grew up as a secular Jew for the first eight years of my life. Okay. Attended uh, synagogue once in a while, mm -hmm. especially during the high holidays. Mm -hmm. And in Judaism, we have internal missionaries, meaning we want Jews to be better Jews. And um, my father was a prime target of a coworker of his, and mm -hmm. he decided, hey, if he's gonna make his coworker more observant, he should do it through me and send me to a religious school. 
And at that time, I, got, I was being beaten up in public school. So my father said, hey, I'll send him to a because, religious school. Because you were I was a short, I was a short kid. Oh, okay. Prime, prime rib for everybody to beat up on. Ouch. It's okay. It makes you a little tougher in life. Uh, and then at eight years old, I'm sent to the most religious school in New York, in Brooklyn, New York. And I grew up within the, what's called the black hat world, the yeshiva world. Mm -hmm. Our family became observant within two years. Mm -hmm. But I also learned of the negative history of the church against the synagogue. Uh, we were taught not to ever walk into a church. It would be a violation of strict Jewish interpretation of law. So now that my sacred calling is Jewish Christian relations, this is, was definitely not in the cards growing up. Now, we have a, a famous saying in Judaism, a man plans and God laughs. But you have to be open to what God wants in your life. And what began with me in Jewish Christian relations was 16 years ago at the Israeli consulate in New York. Mm -hmm. I put my boss on Telemundo television. He was a person who spoke Spanish and English as well as Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And a Brooklyn pastor saw my boss on Telemundo television. And he got a calling in his heart from God to do something for Israel. It was the beginnings of the Second Intifada. Uh, the media was beating up Israel. So this pastor at Bay Ridge Christian Center decided to do something for Israel. Mm -hmm. Invites my boss, and at the last minute, right before the Sabbath, my boss calls me up and says, something happened in Israel, I have to go on television, can you please go instead of me? It's only a half hour of walking distance, mm -hmm. so I won't be violating the Sabbath by driving in a car. And that was my dilemma. What do I do? My religious upbringing said I it shouldn't. Was in a church? It was in a uh, yeah, it was in a church. Mm -hmm. Bay Ridge Christian Center is a non-denominational spirit-filled church. Mm -hmm. And here I am. What do I do? Ah. So I confess today that I valued my job. Mm -hmm. And I said yes immediately mm -hmm. to my boss. Uh, but the guilty feelings did descend upon my shoulders right afterwards. And I was looking what for did I do? what I do. What am I, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So. A good Jewish boy will always ask the rabbi, what, what can I do? So I asked my rabbi, am I allowed to go? And he says, of course, you're like in the Israeli army. You got a, a command to go, no questions asked. Thank you for, for the dispensation, rabbi. I will be going to church for the very first time. And my understanding of Christianity back then, growing up in New York, is that everyone is Catholic. And because I watched a lot of movies that had church scenes, there's stained glass windows, there's organ music, there's monks chanting, there's some type of pool in the back. I don't know, you guys like dunking a lot. I, so I really didn't understand what I was going in, but I was also very fearful of going in. And I walk in and it's just a, just a massive room, uh, 800 people singing Israeli songs, waving Israeli flags. I'm definitely in the twilight zone, like who are you? Where'd you come from? And I don't know what I said that particular Friday evening, but Sunday morning, uh, Monday morning comes and the ambassador calls me into his office and says, you are now in charge of Christian affairs. Mm -hmm. So I always say in Christianese terms, I need to pray about it. In Jewish terms, I really need to think about this. Mm -hmm. And I go back to my rabbi and I said, what should I do? He says, well, I've been doing Jewish Christian relations for 25 years. I never knew that about him. And you have a sacred calling in front of you right now. But you could obviously do a media perspective on the portfolio and your whole purpose is to get Israel's narrative in Christian TV and newspapers and radio. Or you do this from covenant. And then he begins to lay out the theological vision of what he was doing for the last 25 years onto me. And I'm a deer in headlights. I have no idea of what he's talking about. And I just said, if you think I should do it, I will. And I go back, and I'm a parrot to the ambassador. I just repeat whatever my rabbi said. He thinks I'm a theological genius. <laughs> and I said, I need some time to understand the basics of Christianity. I think it's dishonest to enter into a relationship without knowing the other. And it was an eye-opening experience because the ambassador said, I want you to write a white paper on every single denomination within Christianity, their political and theological stance on Israel, Ouch. and I have six months to complete it. And when I tell people this story, they're like, oh. and I'm like, again, I thought you were all Catholic, so this was going to be very easy. And then you find out there are thousands upon thousands of movements. 
and how you're going to put this all together, it was quite difficult. But at the end of the day, uh, God led me really into the evangelical world, which was mostly ignored by the mainline Jewish Christian dialogue that was happening for the last 35 years mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. Evangelicals were never usually invited to the table. Orthodox Jews never wanted to be part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So you was have it was it because they were more like gospel oriented? There is a. I, again, I'm only speaking with what I heard within sure. Christian circles is basically that there is this notion that evangelicals are not theologically nuanced enough to be part of the dialogue. Okay. Okay. Those are, you know, the holy rollers and they're all yeah, about yeah, yeah. waving their hands up and a lot of the mainline Christian Jewish dialogue, mainstream uh, Jewish Christian dialogue takes place within mainline denominations, your Methodists, sure. Presbyterians, your Lutherans. So you're not going to see any charismatic Lutherans uh, uh, back then you know, who are do part of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is very interesting. Like if, if I look on, on my side, being Christian and having done a walk or so about being Christian, discovering the Jewish roots of Christianity and all of that, during the charismatic renewal, which was in the 70s, right. we were singing... Jewish songs, Evenu Shalom Alechem, you know, seeing that God was starting to put in place without even us really realizing what was happening. And this was like the evangelical charismatic, Correct. which is interesting, like the Holy Spirit was trying to... At the same time as there is a move within the nation of Israel yes. to return back to the yes. land. Exactly. That we were yeah. divorced from for almost 2,000 years, there's also at the, sa at the same time a move within mm -hmm. God's hand in, in Christianity mm -hmm. of calling people and saying, hey, you might want to be able to support the state of Israel and the Jewish people right now because there's biblical prophecy being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And whether you understand this clearly or not, mm -hmm. you're being called to do that. There are many Christians that have received that call but told God to leave a message after the beep. Right? And then there are others who actually took the call and ran with it and were also pioneers and were considered the strange people in the congregation mm -hmm. of their passion for Israel. Mm -hmm. So I am very cognizant that where I am today and where the center is today is because of the blood, sweat, and tears of committed Christians mm -hmm. to make the first move mm -hmm. to say, we're sorry for what happened in the past, but we wish to have a prosperous future, one that is in partnership with you to advance kingdom. Mm -hmm. Which is very interesting again because I was speaking with uh, some friends yesterday coming back here. I were like, you know, the charismatic movement, God was trying to say something and, and now, and I really think that it was all about coming back to the Jewish roots. And some people, as you say, are still charismatic, but haven't picked up what God was really saying. Yeah. And, and they are going around and around, but there is still this spare head who are going with like the Christian and Jewish people coming together. And, and he's like, okay, this is exciting. Where is the next step? Where are we going? It's, it's, a, big, it's a big change, I think. It's little steps right. for a big change. Correct. And again, you have uh, Christian theologians that made that happen. I mean, mm -hmm. Brad Young was a few, he was here mm -hmm. a month ago and mm -hmm. he gave a talk in Hebrew yes, at the Bible Lands Museum about the phenomenon of Christians supporting in Israel. And this is like really, here's a, a Christian theologian who is a graduate of Hebrew University who learned under Professor David Flusser, who is an Orthodox Jewish academic, who talked about the Jewishness of Jesus at a time that was kind of taboo to do that, it was like, wow, Jesus was Jewish. That was if most Christians didn't know that, you know. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's, it is yes. a shock yes. for, for yes. certain Christians. Now, it's not. I think, you know, there was an article in Time Magazine not that long ago, like one of the major trends is rediscovering that Jesus was Jewish. Mm -hmm. and, and I always say to Christians, it's just as much as the divinity of Jesus is very important to you for your connection mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. His humanity also has to be equally as important mm -hmm. and his humanity practiced the Judaism and that Judaism closely reflects what I do today. Mm -hmm. And therefore there's a lot that we can discuss 
because I can't discuss this with a Muslim or a Baha'i or anyone else. So I could talk Jeremiah with you or Isaiah and the, and the prophets. We could talk about holiness and kingdom because all those things have a basis within Tanakh, within the, what we call the oh, Hebrew Bible. Yeah. And, you know, again, when Christianity first started out, they didn't have the canonized scripture that you have today. They only had the, the Tanakh. Yeah. Yeah. So where is it coming from? It's coming from here. That's the basis of it all. I, I totally agree. I mean, when, when I start to read, I mean, when we start to discover the Jewish roots of our faith, suddenly we went back into the Old Testament and, and looking at it, how the Jewish people see it. Because I my background, the thing I was telling you before, is Catholic background. And it's like the God of the Old Testament is like, is like uh, le père fouettard, we say in he's French. He's a little wrathful. Yeah. A little angry. B exactly. Yeah, but he's loving when it comes to the New Testament. And, uh, yeah. and, and I always point out to Christians, did you actually read everything? Because there are times that even in, in the New Testament verses, he, God is not completely always happy. But it's, it's, like, it's like a tradition has been given to us. I know, because of the and, replacement and we think theology. That, exactly. And we think that is the truth because is a tradition that's been given to us. But when we start to study the Torah, study the Tenar, study the Old Testament, however the people you know, call it, it's like suddenly with the Jewish eyes, you see how kind he is, how loving, you know, his loving kindness, the way, again, for social things, how we have to behave. I mean, it's like making your thinking like totally different and that he is part of uh, of your daily life. Right. And he's like, is a God so close to us? Is a God so close to the Jewish people? And they know that. And they know that he's a father. And like, which is again very interesting because as Christian, I've learned that Jesus, and Jesus is my savior. I won't be here today if he didn't do something in my life. But I didn't know who was God. And like, like I say, in my tradition, it's like he's the one high in the sky, you know, all these things. And it's like when I discovered the, my Jewish roots, right. it's like, wait, 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 wait. Let us start all over again. He is not what I've been taught. And now I rediscover it with Jewish glasses. Right. And, and he's like, he's a father, first of all. He loves us. He wants us to be good with each other. And, and he's not the God of just the Sunday. He's like involved with us all the time. And he's, he's like day and night. He's, and, and for me, you don't know the delight and the change that he has been done in, in our life as a family or so to discover him in the Torah, in the scriptures and, and discover who he is, like his quality, his character. And like during the Bible studies, I can see the Christian, you know, the way how we've been brought up. And, and he's like, wait a minute, we have to change our way of thinking because he's a God who social work is so important, how we are with each other, like society is so important. And like, again, from France, we go like, there is the state and there is the church, which we needed in one way because the church was abusive. We shouldn't have been what it was. I mean, it's like, we need a revolution. You would call it a revival <laughs> in As your terms. Revival in a, in a, yeah, in in a, a Christian, Christian. Right, but again, I think because Christianity emphasizes personal salvation, which is part of the, uh, mm -hmm. it's part of the uh, understanding of how one gets into heaven. Mm -hmm. What happens during that process is usually there's a loss of the national yes. uh, talk and discussions of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And Judaism, while we believe that we have a peace in the world to come, mm -hmm. uh, our mandate is here in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that because we want to sanctify God's name mm -hmm. in this world. There are many people who don't know who God is, but the very definition of what a, a mitzvah is or a commandment mm -hmm. 
is not something that is a burden or something that I put into my spiritual savings account only to cash in later so I could get a piece of the walled off Astoria uh, hotel suite later on in heaven. It's not that. It is about sanctification of his will. But we do this not only on a personal level, we do this on a national collective level. And that's the thing that's the key. If we're going to go ahead and deal with kingdom, it's not only the interpersonal relationships that we have with our family and our spouse, but the community and then the state. What does it mean to live as a godly nation? Mm -hmm. Israel right now has an opportunity mm -hmm. and a stewardship mm -hmm. that we have returned back to our land for a third time. Mm -hmm. We know what it means to be kicked out the first two times because we weren't keeping covenant on our side and because when you don't keep covenant on the side, the land can't take it. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy makes it very clear. The only reason why you're able, as Jews at that time, were able to go into the land was because the nations there weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. I and agree. I discovered that this, this last Friday when I was reading the, the parasha, the, the passage that you are that you are reading like in the synagogue. The Torah portion of the week, yeah. That's it. And, and suddenly it dawned on me that, but this is all the commandment that God has given you was for living in the land. Right. That the land that you will go to be the light of the nations, because very often we take it like, I will be the light of the nation. But it's like, it's not national. Not individualism. Exactly. It's nationalism. Exactly. Exactly. Judaism is not yes. an ethnicity. It's a national. It's fulfilling a national narrative in the land of where you can do that. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't separate the Jew from the land, even if though some Jews would like to do that. But if you really look at the Bible, the narrative in its complete fulfillment has to be here. So we have this third opportunity to go ahead and do covenant responsibility in a covenant land on a na national and international level. Yeah. And Hallelujah. that is our thing, but we can't do it alone. This is, that thank is you. The, that yeah. is the piece where most Jews don't understand this, mm -hmm. that yes, we, ha we are supposed to be a kingdom of priests and a light to other nations. Mm -hmm. It's very important. It's not a light to other people, a light to other nations. But we can't do that without having partners. And the closest people that come to the understanding that we have mm -hmm. is people like you. Christians who also believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who are fulfilling the kingdom and understand that it needs to be done in tandem with the Jewish people. David? That's well, it? Yes. We're out of time? I know. Okay. Again. <laughs> but you will come back. I'm going to come back. Carry, you will yeah, come back. Come you will back. come back. Friends, we're so happy to bring you, David, to bring you people from the land of Israel so you can really see what's happening here. And... David is inviting us to be part of them, to be a light to the nations. This is just amazing. And we're living very exciting, exciting time. So from me, from David, we say shalom, shalom to you and see you next time. Bye. This is wonderful. Today we are going to look at two new letters in the Hebrew language, Gimel and Dalet. So we look at the letter, the third letter, first of all, Gimel. Now, there is a name who looks very similar than Gimel, and is Gamal. And Gamal is a camel. And so it's just very interesting. What does a camel do? A camel carry people, and camel can carry things also for people. So what does a camel do? He's kind to the people. And so the name Gimel carry this characteristic of kindness. Okay, so this is Gimel. And the other letter is Dalet. So Dalet is the number four in the alphabet and is also the number four represents the letter Dalet. And Dalet also the name is also a door. If you say Efo Dalet, Efo a Dalet, where la porte? Where is the door? Efo Hadalet. And Dalet uh, also represent something different that Gimel and is almost the opposite. It's like it's a poor person. Like you said, Dal, Ani Dal, I am poor. So you see in, Alef, in the Aleph Bet, all the letters are in a, 
at a special place. And like Gimel is next to Dalet. So Gimel, which represents kindness, the generous one, is next to the poor one. And like obviously the generous one will give to the poor. And this is how God does the things. You see, again, we see in this Aleph Bet the character of God. He loves, one of the things that he loves is when we help each other. And this is part of how God loves to make the world. The generous give to the poor and the poor receive from the, from the rich one. And it's like there is a blessing to give and there is a blessing to receive. And it's part, it's part of how, it's part of the pattern of the world. So it's, it's important. So now we can look also at specific names that we can learn. See, we know Gimel and we know Dalet. So if we put the two names together, Dalet and Gimel, de, de and Ge, so Dag, Dag, Dag is fish. So you know, you know Dag, you know Gamel, which is a, a, a camel. Uh, there is another name like Derek. And Derek is the way. You can remember, oh yeah, Derek is the name also of somebody. So Derek is the way. Like Jesus say, I am the way. And you see, which is interesting because it's also like Dalet is the door. So he's the door for us to find the way. Isn't it amazing? I think the Hebrew language is so rich for us to dig um, who God is and how we can behave with each other. This is a great thing. So now, we say we know already four letters. We know Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and Dalet. And you know already four letters. This is great. Well done. And we'll see each other next time. See you. Bye. Thank you, David, for coming and for the dialogue that we we'll have together. And also you can contact us and write email to us on info at israelfirst.org. We are always delighted to know and connect with you. And from me and from David today, we are saying shalom, shalom, and see you next time.